If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk, and I do not accept the responsibility. Make sure you press the follow button on my Instagram, as if you were my ex pushing my buttons. I was walking out of a Tim Hortons when a hooded figure called my name. I slowly turned around, and... <laughs> that chemist had an offer I couldn't resist. If I gave him some ethyl acetate and nitromethane, he would give me some phenyl and other chemicals. Damn, what is that, bro? <laughs> He told me to come over and slide through tonight, whatever that means, and I did. He even graciously said he would make it himself, so this is me watching him do it. He started off by pouring sodium benzoate into a 5 liter round bottom boiling flask as the catalyst. He took a big bag of suspicious white powder, which he said was salicylic acid, but he put that into the 5 liter as well. It doesn't really matter what amounts that we're using, cause we're just trying to get some fennel out of it. Every single joint was wrapped with Teflon tape, as we really don't want the smell of fennel in the air. A thermometer was added initially, but we ended up not really using it. Now, all we have to do is just crank the heat and see what happens. As the heat started to progress higher and higher, we start to see a condensation on the inside of the flask. The condensation is mainly salicylic acid, and that's the condensation that you see. Once the decarboxylation of the salicylic acid really increases, that's when the fennel actually comes over. Well, you're probably wondering how this works. Don't you worry, I will show you. Well, actually, that chemist showed me how it works and I'm showing you, but you know, you, you get it. The carboxy group of the salicylic acid is in equilibrium with its protonated and deprotonated form. Normally, you would see phenyl being made from the decarboxylation of salicylic acid, but this time, there is a catalyst of sodium benzoate. The sodium benzoate should help to increase the reaction speed. The paper that I got the proposed mechanism from was from salicylic acid and benzoic acid. Now, in our case, we didn't use benzoic acid. However, salicylic acid can give off a proton to sodium benzoate, making benzoic acid. Now, there is a competition between an oxygen atom and the terminal ring carbon atom. This is based on the proton to either give the undisassociated acid or a sigma complex leading to the products of phenyl and carbon dioxide. Simply put, salicylic acid will donate its proton to sodium benzoate, making benzoic acid. The benzoic acid can then donate its proton back, making the sigma complex. Then the decarboxylation can happen and CO2 is ejected out. Hopefully that makes sense and is correct, but if it didn't, then spam F in the chat. As the decarboxylation progresses, we can see our beautiful droplets of phenyl coming over. Once it really got going, it really got going. The prophecy is true. Phenyl does like to clog up the condenser, as its melting point is a lot higher than other compounds. The phenyl in the receiving flask is actually super cooled and below its melting point. If you want to see something really cool, watch this. Joey turned off the water condenser briefly, and then he returned it back on, allowing the phenyl to crystallize. You can see the beautiful crystals of phenyl slowly growing up the condenser column. They say chemistry isn't sexual, but this got me growing right now too. <laughs> When we turn off the heating mantle, you can see the fennel crystallize all over the flask. Here's the receiving flask as well. Joey used his powerful chemistry fingers to remove the flask. Joey then graciously filled up my bottle that I brought him. It felt as if I was an orphan just wandering through life, and Joey just found me on the side of the street and saved me. What a beautiful man. I don't think I could ever stop talking about it. Hey, look, here's the fennel.